Um, so quickly, who I am, my name is Eric Overfield, uh, Microsoft Regional Director, Microsoft MVP as well, um, like a, a lot of you who've been contributing as well. Thank you all for your cool stuff. I uh, work with Pixel Mill. Uh, got all my information so you can find out who I am, how to get a hold of me, how to get a hold of my company, all that great stuff. All right. Thank you all. So um, basically what I was looking at was this really common request to have that, that an RSS web part, but it was really flexible. So it was not just asking for an RSS feed and it would print it out, but would provide a lot of other options out of the box as well, but then also as part of the PNP side. I really wanted something that had a lot of demo code, a lot of code that did actual uh, extra things that you might want that you could then tear apart and say, wow, that was really cool because I think I, like many of you, I'm taking all those samples out, I'm taking that cool little piece and I'm, I'm, I'm using it in my project. This, P, uh, this, uh, uh, web part was definitely inspired by Oliver Carpenter's, uh, uh RSS reader web part, part of his, uh, 40 Fantastics, uh, component that I know that, that Vesta loves so much. Um, there was the, the major issue with that was that it, it was built on SharePoint Framework 1.1. Uh, and it hadn't been updated. The other aspect was that the um, the technique that uh, Oliver used to grab the RSS feed was using a Yahoo API that actually got shut down a couple months ago. So we really needed something else to go and grab an RSS feed. So what I wanted to do was not only have just one way to go get a feed as an, uh, using one API, I wanted to be able to get a feed directly. I wanted to use some of the, the new classes available in SharePoint Framework. Um, I wanted to try using other services. Maybe I would want my own proxy service uh, so that I could have something hosted in Azure. I would go, ping, my web part would ping that and then uh, that proxy would go get that, or uh, using a popular paid service. Maybe you're looking that you'd want to use um, something like uh, uh, RSS to JSON, which is a, a service you can pay for that will help be that intermediary for you. Another common request that um, I'm often seeing and that I'm using a lot myself is when I ever need to get external data, um, some from SharePoint, from Graph, from external APIs, et cetera, I would want to store that data in the browser's local storage because maybe it doesn't update very often. Maybe it's uh, a list of news articles, and I want to make sure that every time um, my end users are going to a page on a portal, they don't have to reload from SharePoint and wait those extra couple seconds. We want to store that in their own local storage. But I wanted a really flexible local storage technique that could use, that could basically store any kind of data, um, but that had a, a really good um, hashing algorithm for the local storage key so that if I, had, if I was making a request maybe to a SharePoint list and I wanted to be able to go to multiple pages, I could store the different pages in their own local storage key if I needed to. Uh, so I used, in this case, an MD5 uh, hash of the of some sort of input parameter, maybe the URL. Uh, I know MD5 is not considered um, uh, cryptographically, cryptographically, I suppose, uh, secure. For this particular purpose, I think it's completely fine. It's super fast, super lean and quick, and provides a, a reasonable um, just keying mechanism. Uh, let's see. So the other, the last thing I really wanted to add in here was the ability to um, allow the content, op the editor, the page editor, the user of this web part, to be able to manipulate the uh, the way that the results would get rendered. So this is a huge, uh, big second thanks to. Uh, whoops, I misspelled Frank. Um, no, I didn't. And uh, Mikhail, um, for the part, the work that they did over in the um, the React uh, Search Refiner for search results web part that uh, recently became a solution, providing those links for y'all if you haven't seen it. Just that is definitely one of the the uh, cooler web parts that I'm using a lot for uh, clients that I work with because it really makes working with uh, modern SharePoint and Search great. So I basically took um, their idea of how to work with Handlebar Template. If they got it from someone else, um, please all you know let me know. I, I bet I, that's where I got it from. So some cool stuff. Now when you're Working with um, uh, when you're working with trying to get data from an external site, of course you have to worry about cores as well. So I added a couple ideas of cores there, which is that you could turn the mode on or off so that uh, the browser will or won't send the cores request in the header, um, or as well as using a proxy. And I'll, I'll be able to show all of this kind of quickly in the demo and all the settings. Um, finally. The idea was uh, what I, I started with, which is I really wanted to throw a lot of little things together that I've been using into one web part so that from somewhat selfishly, now I can go grab my code more easily because I've vetted it a little better. 
but hopefully for you as well. I really hope that a lot of you takes a web part like this and and sure, it should work fine out of the box. That's the great part. But then as well, you'll rip it apart and you'll see, oh, well, how did he do that? That's an interesting way to do that. And of course, I'm always looking for feedback too. Please, if you think it's way to improve it, let's get those PRs in uh, and let's have a lot of fun with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, see this web part in action. Uh, so I had just, of course, the demo page loaded. Uh, once you've got it all in star, installed, it's just going to be your RSS reader web part. Um, by default, I've got a bunch of settings set up. And again, this is straight out of Oliver's. I used his demo blog. As I want to give him credit for the cool work that he did. Uh, I just have a lot more settings available, though. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, there's different ways to get the request. So the three that I talked about is a direct request. This would be the browser making a direct request to the end service. Um, the second one is using this feed to JSON. The code itself is always expecting a normalized JSON in order um, to get a, a reliable output, a reliable rendered output. Um, and I have a service to do that within the code base. So, um, but feed to JSON would help you go and pull the um, uh, you could go to a service and it will return you JSON. What I like about this is this is an open source solution. Uh, they do provide an endpoint that you can ping uh, just for testing, but it's not for production. The catch to that is that they are not sending back the proper course request, uh, which uh, course response, which is a real shame. So that actually doesn't work. What you would really want to do is take their open source solution, go put it up in Azure. And uh, you could then ping that. You could ping your own service in production. And then if you are willing to use a paid service, uh, there's this uh, RSS to JSON.com. They offer uh, a free account, which is basically you can make 10,000 requests a day, uh, and they will store your RSS feed for an hour and a half. They'll only refresh it every hour and a half. Uh, but it's pretty cool. I mean, it's nice and simple for a non-production environment. And then they have paid services, which is pretty reasonable. Uh, this, though, is the easy way because it is um, they are sending the proper course response. And uh, this is what I use by default when you first install this thing because it, it was reliable. I could always make sure that we were getting a response. Assuming your corporate firewall doesn't do some weird proxy stuff. I, I haven't been able to test such a scenario. Uh, you can change the maximum count for the direct or feed to, uh, feed to JSON.org. Uh, you cannot change the account for RSS. Uh, to JSON if you, um, unless you're paying for it. Some other cool things. Uh, so I have that caching enabled um, where you can set the timeout as to how long you're going to store something in local storage. Uh, you can change some loading messaging, but then there's also the core's response um, so that you can say, do I want to uh, disable cores by in default I'm going to have the cores mode enabled, but I can send you can send along the the, the proper um, header message that says no no uh, the header request that just says um, no cores uh, or use the course proxy. So let's go ahead and kind of see some of this in action though of course, and I'll show you the next screen in a second. Uh, so let's say I want to make a direct request to my RSS feed, and if I click apply, I'm going to get an error saying that well that particular RSS feed is not sending the proper course response. Thus it's thus it's not going to be any good. Even if I disable cores, it's still not going to work because the browser now is saying I don't like this. This isn't cool. But you can use a course proxy, and I'm using a uh, this course anywhere, um, another open source project that's not really good for production, but but does work. If I go ahead and I apply that, what's happening? What should happen here is uh, what should have happened is the uh, let's just save it, and we will see if it actually loads. This was working before. Maybe my tenant is no longer being responsive. Oh, there we go. Huh. Uh, that was working. I'll make sure it is. Um, I don't know why it's it's not right now where I was using the, um, maybe it didn't uh, save it. Uh, no, it did. Huh. Uh, what, uh, there we go. Let's try request. Let's try apply. Oh, well. Good old demo gods. It doesn't work. Uh, it, it had been working this morning when I tested it before the call, but such is life. Uh, let's go ahead and let's turn all this off. Oh, I think I was disabling core modes. Now let's try it again. There we go. Perfect. Um, now let me try it properly. Perfect. There we go. Uh, I just had a the S office. It's a good bug. There you go. Um, I was disabling cores even though I was trying to use a course proxy. So let's go ahead and turn all that off. Let's go ahead and do one more thing here before I show the quick rendering and then end this. Um, if you go ahead and you set caching on, now let me go ahead and, and turn on the... Um, uh, network debugger. I'm going to look for the word tech that's being loaded. Uh, that should be the any time that I'm going to load the um, uh, the RSS feed. If I go ahead and click apply, 
And uh, let's go ahead and actually refresh the whole page. I'm probably already storing it in um, local storage. So uh, if I have the, um, the caching turned on, what's going to happen, what you actually can see is the feed loaded, but I didn't actually load anything in the, uh, uh, in the network tab. But there's nothing actually sent across the wire. So what's happening is that there is a – I'm storing the results in local storage with a timeout, and um, uh, it works pretty well. So if I go ahead and I delete this, let's go back to it, and let's go ahead and refresh. That's fine. We should now see that we actually had to go pull the RSS feed. I think I'm in store. If I refresh it yet again, we'll see now that local storage is actually being used. I didn't have to make another request, so I thought that was super cool. Uh, the last little demo that I want to show on the um, on the editing side before we quickly flip over the code for just a, a few minutes here. Uh, is on the rendering aspect of it. So by default, we're using a React component for rendering. Uh, a lot of things that you can change if you wanted. I even kept in some of Oliver's um, uh, color changing kind of aspects, which uh, I thought was kind of cool. It's just a cool demo for me. I, I don't really like it in general. Like, I don't think this would be a good thing that you would typically want to give your end users, um, but I thought that was cool. I am using moment.js, so for my European friends, if we wanted to change the date, we could change the date. Uh, date format got changed. Maybe I want to turn some things off. I want to allow more characters. All those work. Uh, but the other really cool thing that I liked was using that handlebar template approach. So by default, there's a template that's enabled for you. If you save that and apply it, um, it gives more of a cardstock. Uh, using all the other little things, the cool things, the PMP um, React controls as well for something like the web part title, uh, using all of that really cool stuff. Cool. So very quick demo. Uh, thought that would be fun to see what the uh, what we're going on, on what we're doing on the front end. If we go ahead and we quickly look on the back end code, um, one of the the major things that I did here was um, I like the idea of moving everything, most of your helpers, most of your controls, your modules, etc., down to the source level so they're more shareable. Uh, totally up to you. Totally understand that you know some people like doing it certain ways. Um, I was able to pretty much modularize out the local storage service. So if you want to just grab that, I think you can. Um, I tried to comment stuff as much as I could as well for you, uh, but I have some um, some interfaces to be able to, to be able to interact with the local storage. Uh, there's a whole RSS reader service as well um, that uh, 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 that allows you to, to be able to, uh, to work with and manipulate the RSS feeder. I created a simple RSS parser as well. I wanted something leaner that I could find online. And um, last but not least, um, there's just the, the general layouts and the general controls. So a lot of fun stuff hopefully you can find in this code. Uh, I would always love to get uh, more feedback. Oh, yeah, the, the client service. Um, what I ended up doing was creating multiple services uh, for t t interacting with different types of RSS feeds. And then um, I had the, but all of them use the same HTTP client. And what they basically do as input is they set up an HTTP client from um, context. And and hopefully AC is uh, cringing a little bit. He always taught me never really just send in the context, uh, your web part context to a module. I did it here for simplicity. Typically the recommendation would be to, I think the best practice is really to send in only the specific aspects you might need to your sub sub module, sub controls, etc. cetera. Um, but for simplicity, I just sent in the entire context and that allowed me to um, uh, grab the HTTP client that I needed. So thank you all very much. Hope that demo um, gave you a good overview of what we've got there. If you want that URL at all, it's just, you know, over in that GitHub thing. I'm a huge fan of the idea of creating a better interface for that. So that was presented a few minutes ago. Absolutely agree. That would be really cool to help promote some of the web parts that um, are almost ready for, for um, uh, a live instead of, you know, for production rather than just being a demo of, of maybe how to make CRUD requests, which, by the way, that is a cool solution as well. Uh, just probably not something that you would use on a live portal. So thank you all. Thank you.